Hello everyone, this is Mike Wagner from the University of South Carolina School of Medicine uh, and today we're going to be talking about something that's near and dear to my heart, uh, namely the lung and how to ultrasound it. So a couple of things to keep in mind when we're talking about lung ultrasound. The first is, is it just looks different. So when we look at the something like the heart and we tell you to put the probe on the chest at a certain place and we're going to cut it at a certain angle and based on that we're going to get an image that looks like this which looks like a heart as you conceive it to be and see in pictures and things like that and you get happy. Um, whereas when we tell you to put the probe on the chest to look at the lung we tell you you're going to slice the lung in a certain angle um, you get an image that looks like this which for a lot of people especially when they're first starting off look at lung ultrasound as it kind of looks like a snowstorm and they don't know what to do with that kind of information. So um, it's important to realize that lung ultrasound is mainly just making sense of artifacts. And just like EKGs in the heart and EEGs in the brain, um, EKGs don't look like the heart and the EEGs don't look like the brain. Um, but from those uh, important artifacts we can glean a lot of information. The same is true with lung ultrasound. The lung is an air-filled structure and as a result creates a lot of um, artifacts on ultrasound but we can actually interpret those artifacts and um, derive a lot of useful information from them. And so um, back in the 80s there were some folks who were kind of a, a little bit crazy but also really bit uh, a little bit geniuses um, saw the, the pattern in kind of a beautiful mind type fashion and, um, and, and made sense of all these uh, lung ultrasound artifacts and um, found their clinical utility. Um, and so you can actually see um, this portion up here is actually all soft tissue and that actually looks like you, what you would expect it to look like. You have rib, rib, um, shadowing, shadowing. Um, but um, this is everything that's artifactual and it's sometimes a little bit confusing. But if you recognize that this is just the very surface of the lung that slides back and forth and that's the lung kind of adhered to the um, parietal pleura as it moves sort of back and forth along the chest wall and you just realize that everything else is just artifact, the goal then just becomes to distinguish abnormal artifacts from the normal ones. And so in the 80s, the first uh, folks to do this were actually veterinarians and, and horses, but then, um, you know, uh, Daniel Lichtenstein in France and then um, some uh, folks over in Italy have really kind of um, um, promoted and expanded the utility and uses of uh, lung ultrasound to bring uh, that care to the bedside for patients. So even though we can answer a lot of advanced questions for the purpose of this talk, we're going to only answer three basic questions, namely, is there air around the lung parenchyma and pneumothorax? Is there fluid around the lung parenchyma uh, in the form of pleural effusion? And is the fluid inside the lung parenchyma, such as uh, pulmonary edema? And we're going to utilize certain artifacts to kind of answer those questions. Um, normal artifacts being a uh, mirror image or a curtain sign that you see when there is no pleural effusion present versus a um, spine sign when there is a pleural effusion present. When there's no pneumothorax in normal circumstances, you should see a, a lung sliding or a seashore sign if you're looking at end mode. Um, when there is a pneumothorax present, you should see um, or you might see a lung point um, or you should get a barcode sign on uh, M mode. And then when you have air filled lung compared to um, uh, fluid filled lung, you get this A line pattern versus this B line pattern. We'll go over all those in detail. Starting off with pleural effusion, looking at that technique, um, you use a uh, low frequency probe, so either a multiphase array probe or a curvilinear probe. Uh, you put the probe marker pointed up towards the head if you're under um, standard conventions. If you're using the cardiology settings, point the probe marker towards the feet. Um, and you have the probe in the mid to posterior axillary line, somewhere around the fifth to eighth intercostal space, depending on the patient's body habitus and position. And you're going to face the probe towards midline, so shine towards the um, vertebral bodies in the midline. And you're going to use the liver or the spleen as an acoustic window, and that'll be um, one important landmark structure. You're going to find the moving diaphragm, that'll be the second big structure that you need to identify. And then you're going to um, fan the probe or adjust the depth enough so that you can actually see um, the vertebral bodies in the middle of the screen here, or at the bottom of the screen. 
And so here is a, the liver, here's the diaphragm. Uh, above the liver is, or the diaphragm is the air-filled lung, uh, which is causing this mirror image artifact. If you notice, it looks like there is um, liver on the other side of this diaphragm. Uh, and that's again an artifact that's created by ultrasound beams sort of bouncing around um, off of the air-filled lung and uh, coming back to the probe at different angles, sort of fooling the machine to actually thinking there's uh, liver tissue on this side. Notice how the um, mirror image artifact extends down below uh, or past the level of the vertebral bodies, which we know can't be true. Um, uh, liver isn't above the diaphragm, nor does it extend medially across the vertebral bodies here. Um, whereas when you have um, pleural effusion, you get this black wedge of fluid above the diaphragm, and you can visualize the vertebral bodies uh, above the diaphragm nicely. So this is what we call a curtain sign when you have an air-filled lung that's um, obscuring the view of what's distal behind it. You can see the air-filled lung sliding in and out of view here and, and causing a curtain kind of that obscures your view of the spleen and diaphragm here. And that's an aerated lung. Um, this is again mirror image artifact and you notice has the diaphragm kind of moves um, up and down. It um, alternates between revealing the vertebral bodies and concealing them as the respirations go back and forth. And that's a, a, a mirror image artifact and that's no effusion present here. When you have uh, effusion above the diaphragm, notice that the ultrasound beams are able to pass through the liver of the diaphragm and actually reveal what's on the other side. You can actually see the vertebral bodies, whereas you can't see the vertebral bodies up here when there is a, no effusion present. So. This is a positive spine sign. You can have small effusions, like on the right there, you get this tiny little wedge of an effusion. Um, whereas over here, you can have this very large effusion where you can just see the lung floating in, the, in, in, in all that fluid. So an important thing when you're looking for um, pneumothorax with ultrasound is it, it's very dependent on your technique. So when the patient is upright, uh, as you can see in my um, second grade drawing, um, the air in the thoracic cavity will actually move and rise to the most or the least dependent portion um, in the chest cavity. And so it'll collect up here at the apices. Whereas when the patient's supine, the air will actually collect um, up along the anterior chest wall. Um, and it's important to actually have the patient supine because when we scan for pneumothorax, um, uh, we scan along the anterior chest wall. We scan on either side, the left and right, we place the probe in the midclavicular line with the probe marker up towards the head. And then we just um, evaluate each intercostal space um, um, starting up here and just working our way down, um, looking for certain artifacts, um, keeping in mind that when we're on the left-hand side, a lot of times you have to move just laterally to just get around the heart. Uh, a lot of controversy on which probe you need to uh, use. Um, my personal opinion is, is probably this is the best all-around probe, but any of these probes um, you can derive a lot of useful information from. Um, so this is going to be your home screen um, when you're scanning the anterior surface of the lung. You're going to have rib with shadow, rib, shadow. All of this is going to be soft tissue, and then this is going to be your pleural line. And then this artifact that you're seeing here is the pleural, visceral pleura rubbing against the parietal pleura as the person breathes back and forth. And it looks like this little shimmering. Um, some people are described as ants marching on a log or beads on a string. Um, in either case, um, this is what lung sliding looks like, and this is a normal lung sliding and uh, is present when there is no pneumothorax at the site of this probe. Whereas when you have a pneumothorax, you lose that artifact. You lose the visceral parietal pleural interface, and you no longer get those little tiny comet tail artif uh, artifacts coming back. Uh, down and you no longer get that sensation that there's stuff moving back and forth. Instead you just see their intercostal muscles retract and they're breathing pretty hard but you get no um, lung sliding at this, at, this, at this site. If you were to put the um, ultrasound on M mode you can um, distinguish between 
um, um, normal lung and abnormal lung in terms of no pneumothorax and pneumothorax. So this is just what um, um, the chest wall and all the soft tissue looks like over time since it doesn't really move all these images are just static and so they create these straight lines whereas there's all this motion artifact that occurs below the pleural line which is here um, and you get this granular appearance down here um, and so some people have uh, likened this to sort of the waves on a beach appearance where this is the shore uh, and um, uh, these are the waves coming towards the, the beach. When you have uh, a pneumothorax, you lose that motion artifact that's deep to the pleural line. And so everything that's deep down here just looks like the um, still soft tissue uh, above it. Okay, and so here's just two examples of a sandy beach or a seashore sign. Uh, here's a barcode sign. If you saw this, this would be a normal lung. If you saw this, this would be suggestive of uh, a pneumothorax. And if you get confused about which one is normal and which one is not normal, just remember um, you'd probably be um, more happy if you were on the beach. So beach is a, a good thing, a normal thing. Now, when you get to um, scan laterally, um, sometimes you can detect what's called a um, lung point sign. And what happens here is as the person exhales, um, the, the collapsed lung moves further away from the um, parietal pleura here and you don't get any lung sliding or any artifact pattern. But then when the person inhales, you can see now all of a sudden the lung comes back up a little bit even though it's partially collapsed. Um, if you look at this particular site, you can actually start seeing probably lung sliding again. And so that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing lung sliding come back and forth where there's no lung sliding here and now there's lung sliding and you can see little comet tail artifacts coming off of that. And this is a lung point and this is 100% specific for um, pneumothorax. This is what a lung point looks like on M-mode imaging where you get intermixed barcode sign and then seashore sign and then barcode sign again. So starting in the same general position as with the pneumothorax, we've got our home screen here, rib with shadow, rib with shadow, pleural line, soft tissue, everything down here is artifact. Um, we're going to assess for evidence of pulmonary edema. We're going to compare A line pattern versus B line pattern. Um, normal is going to be this horizontal artifact pattern where what happens is the ultrasound beams coming down hit this air filled um, pleural a lung, the pleural line here, and then just go straight back to the probe. And a lot of these um, beams will go back and forth and come back to the pleural line, which the ultrasound machine uh, interprets um, that as being just further and further down. So that's why these lines are all the same um, distance from each other compared to the pleural line and the skin surface here. And sometimes um, it can be difficult to see A lines depending on what type of machine you have and what probe you're using. Uh, it's really important that um, you get perpendicular to the lung surface here um, as they don't do in this clip until towards the end. Um, now in, for B lines, the same principles apply, but instead of getting a horizontal artifact pattern, you get this vertical artifact pattern. Um, and these two um, patterns look strikingly different. Um, and this beeline pattern is suggestive of pulmonary edema. So again, just remember A for uh, aerated lung and B for uh, bad lungs filled with fluid. So when you are identifying a beeline, it's important that you first identify um, the pleural line and the lung sliding. The beeline should extend from the pleural line itself and extend all the way down to the bottom of the screen, moving back and forth with respirations. Don't confuse beelines with comet tail artifacts, which are much, much shorter, uh, extend much less down in our normal variants. Um, beelines should appear like sunbeams, searchlights, or um, lasers. In conclusion, you're going to look for fluid above the diaphragm and a positive spine sign in pleural effusion, the absence of lung sliding and the presence of lung point in pneumothorax, and the presence of B-line pattern instead of A-line pattern in pulmonary edema. I hope this short introduction to the lung ultrasound has been helpful and makes you want to learn more about this exciting area of bedside ultrasound. Thanks.